So continuing on the no taxation without representation, we've talked about how the colonists just feel it's not very fair and it's not just that they are not having a voice in the parliament. And because they feel it's not just, they don't feel something's going on right there, they are going to protest like the Sons of Liberty. They're going to boycott. They're going to do letter writings. And every time England is going to do something like try and put in a new tax, they're going to cry out no taxation without representation. And here are some of the members of the Sons of Liberty. I mean, just a lot of businessmen, uh, men who are very respected members of their community. Um, and they're just going to, they're going to be able to recruit pretty easily. Every time England does something, they're going to be able to go out there at a pub and they're going to be able to recruit people by screaming, yelling out, no taxation without representation. And they get more and more recruits. So the Sons of Liberty are going to be gaining followers in these years leading up to the war. The next cause of the American Revolution is going to be the Declaratory Act in 1766. So Britain is starting to get a little um, upset. They're starting to get a little worried that the colonies are rebellious. You know, they put a tax on them. They're protesting it. They're smuggling in items. They've put another tax on them, and then they wrote these letters, and they boycotted it. So England said, okay, we'll get rid of the Stamp Act. And now they've got this rallying cry, you know, no taxation without representation. So England is just shaking their heads. They don't really understand what is going on with the colonists. So they feel it would be best to issue this declaratory act. So they do. And if you look at the word, it looks like declare. That's all they're doing. They're going to declare. So Parliament is going to announce in this act that they, Parliament, have the right to levy, place, and collect taxes on the colonies. So what they're trying to do here is they're trying to reassert their authority in the colonies. So they're saying we have the authority to do this. We are going to put these taxes on you. Parliament represents you. Um, Parliament has the ability to enforce these taxes. And you guys are just going to have to go along with it. So I got like a power sign on taxes. They're, they're telling them they have the power to tax you. I'm going to ask you, when someone tells you they have power to do something, what does it typically mean for them or show about them? I have the power to do this. It normally shows that they're kind of weak. If you're the government and you're having to tell people, I have the power to tax you, I have the power to enforce my laws, it looks like you've lost control. It looks like you have failed to do what you were supposed to do with, as a government. And so the colonists, they don't miss this. Like, oh, you're scared now. You're scared you're having to declare you have power over us. People who have real power don't really have to say that they have the power to do something. You know it. You can feel that power. Like, you know when they're entering the room. Like, they have that. They, they personify it. So when England does this, it makes them kind of look weak. Or at least some of the colonists are starting to think, like, England is, is losing it. They're losing control. And they're not wrong. They are. So now that they've announced it, they're going to go ahead and they're going to do a new tax. And they do the Townsend Acts. So these are this is an act, and it's going to be an act on an indirect tax. And an indirect tax means it's kind of a hidden tax. So an indirect tax is kind of in the price of the item. So a good example of an indirect tax that you and I know would be gas. Every single time you go and you buy a gallon of gas, the tax is already included in the price. So most people don't really know what gasoline tax is. 
because it's not like at the end of your receipt when you go to a store and you see the sales tax and it tells you, hey, you spent this much on sales tax. This is kind of a sneaky hidden tax. You put it into the item. So they're going to do these hidden taxes on these items of tea, glass, paint, paper, and lead. When they do that, the colonists are really building. You know, this is a whole new world over here. They're building up their towns. They're building up their communities. And so now you've kind of increased the cost of construction. Homes need all these things. Businesses need all these things. And so now the cost of construction is going to be up. And I get that they've got a tax on tea, but that is the drink of the colonies. You know, that, that is what they do. They, that is their, their beverage. You get tea, water, and then they had alcohol. But when they're putting these little hidden taxes in it, people do realize the tax is there. Because when you go to the store and you go buy the items, you know, last week it cost you this amount. And all of a sudden this week, you're coming away at a higher price on those items. So the colonists are going to protest again. So they're going to write their letters. They're going to boycott. They're going to refuse to buy the items. And they're going to use the violence. Because they are very consistent on that protesting, boycotting, and violence, England is going to once again give in to the colonies, and they're going to repeal, take away the acts in 1770. Now remember, they just declared that they had the power to do these taxes. They said, look, you know, we got power. We can do this. We can enforce it. And the colonists have once again proven that they don't really have the ability to do it because they're just not going to buy it. They're going to protest, and they're going to do violence. So England is proving day by day that they are very weak when it comes to making the colonists do things. And then Boston Massacre happens. So the colonists are starting to get annoyed. You know, they've had the Stamp Act, the Sugar Act. They have that slogan, no taxation without representation. And England has tried to take back control of the colonies and they've put soldiers throughout the colonies so those red coats over there right so they've got they've got soldiers in the colonies now soldiers are stationed typically in the colonies you know the colonies are vulnerable and as citizens of britain they are to be protected like any other you know person would be so the soldiers are always in the colonies but in march 1770 um Soldiers are certainly increasing in the city of Boston. Uh, Boston is definitely where the most rebellious people seem to be living. The Sons of Liberty are there. Um, and England is very much aware that this seems to be the heart of the rebellion. The heart of where people are starting to really kind of organize the protests and the boycotts and stuff. So that they're not stupid. So in March 1770, the soldiers are stationed there. They're supposed to be enforcing Parliament's laws on those taxes, and they're out on patrol. So they're just walking up and down the streets. The colonists are outright disrespectful to the soldiers. You know, they're heckling them. So they're making fun of them. Uh, they're uh, saying things about them. But, you know, they're soldiers. They, you know, you just got to shrug it off, right? One Bostonian goes ahead and they throw a snowball. Now, I know you think, like, it's just a snowball. Well, it's like an ice snowball, and there's probably rocks in it. Um, but when they throw it, someone shoots the gun, and it goes off. It could have been the British. It could have been a colonist. But at the end of the day, after the smoke is cleared, five colonists are dead, and the soldiers are still standing there just fine. The people of Boston are outraged. You know, they're livid. And they call for justice. Here is a group of soldiers who have opened fire on unarmed civilians, on unarmed people. And they just feel like this is abuse. 
this is murder, this is not justifiable, what has occurred. And so what Britain decides to do is they put the soldiers on trial. But they don't put them on trial in a Boston court. They put them in, on trial in a military court. And those are two different things. So the city of Boston has their courts. And when they had their courts, it would be colonists as the jurors. If you're going through a military court, the people who are your jurors, the people who are going to sit in judgment, are military soldiers. And it's the same thing today. So when soldiers are accused of things at Fort Bragg, when they go through trial, they're going through a military court, and the jury is just military soldiers. So they are given a trial, but the military soldiers, the Boston soldiers, they are found innocent. So five colonists are dead. The guys who shot and killed them are free to go. Now, Britain takes them back to England. Like they say, you got to get out of the colonies. So they take them back. But the people of Boston are livid. They feel like justice has not been served here. They feel that Britain has denied their deceased loved ones justice. So the people of Boston cry out and they demand a new trial, and this time a trial in a civilian court. But the king refuses to give it to him. He says, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um, this, you guys, we get that you're upset, but they had a trial and they were found innocent based on all the evidence that we had, and so it's just, it's not going to happen. We're not going to give another trial for this. When that happens, the Sons of Liberty, who were very much present at the Boston Massacre, um, they're going to go ahead and they're going to use this as a point to attract more people to their cause. They're going to say, look, they are now, the British soldiers are now just openly killing us in the streets as we walk. And when we say, you know, this is murder, the crown is saying, ah, they're acting as soldiers, and it was justifiable. So they definitely gained more followers. And the word choice, Boston Massacre, is really a propaganda uh, thing. So five people dying, is it is bad, and there's no, there's no way around that, but it's not a massacre. When you think massacre, the word is there, there, mass, mass killing. And it was not mass killing, but to the colonists it was. And this is how they, this was their propaganda picture for it. So this is what you would see in the newspapers in the city of Boston. You would see these soldiers just standing and ordering the execution, the firing of these civilians who have no guns, have no weapons on them whatsoever. But now that this has occurred, and they're putting this out there, that it was a massacre, that these men were murdered, they, you know, this is going to really get more and more sympathy for the Sons of Liberty and protesting these unfair, unjust actions by Parliament and the, and the soldiers. The king could have stopped all of this by giving the colonists what they wanted. He could have given them that trial in the civilian courts, but he doesn't. He could have told his soldiers, you know what, I mean, you're going to go through trial. If they find you guys guilty, you know, they find you guilty. He could have done it. He could have sacrificed them for peace's sake. He just doesn't do it. He feels like, hey, they've had a fair trial in his courts, and that's the end of it. He could have done, he could have given the people of Boston what they wanted. He's just not going to do it. 